The PlayStation 5 has finally been updated to solve one of the biggest problems that it suffers from, and I'm gonna tell you about it right away. Hello and welcome back to Gears and Tech. Today we're talking about the PlayStation 5 and one of the problems that has plagued the system ever since it launched and continues to plague it for a lot of people. What I'm talking about is the really small storage space. A lot of the videos on my channel already cover the workarounds for the storage space issues, but I wanted to put it all into one place where we can talk about it and explain those options to you. First of all, it's no secret that onboard storage in the PlayStation 5 is smaller than its competitors, i.e. the Xbox Series X. The usable space on this PlayStation 5 is 667 gigabytes, which is quite small by today's standards, especially when the PlayStation 5 has better graphics. The texture details are probably going to take up more space, which means that you run out of space on that internal storage quite quickly. It is not all hopeless. Before we get too far into this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel down below. If you've seen some of our content already and have not subscribed, we want you to join our community. Smash that like button, hit subscribe, and let's get back to the video. Sony knew this would be a bit of a concern for people, so they introduced what's known as the Kraken compression system. The Kraken compression system is actually a piece of hardware that is built into the PlayStation 5. That means it's not using any GPU power, it's not using any CPU power, and it has the ability to on the fly decompress an already compressed image or data file. How great is this system? It's rumored to provide up to 60% compression. And when people have compared the PlayStation 5 to a PlayStation 4, that is true for a lot of games. That means that a game that is on your PlayStation 4 that takes up, let's say 100 gigabytes on the PlayStation 5 only takes up 30 gigabytes because it was compressed 60%. Now that's not true in all cases, obviously, and we're not comparing a PlayStation 4 to a PlayStation 5. We're comparing current gen to current gen. So when we compare the Xbox Series X to the PlayStation 5, many of the games are getting up to a 30% savings in storage space on the PlayStation 5 versus the Xbox. So when you compare the 802 gigabytes of usable storage on the Xbox Series X to the 667 gigabytes of usable storage on the PlayStation 5, and you add your 30% compression, you actually end up much closer to the 802 gigabytes. That's all great, but what if you've used all 667 gigabytes and you need more space. That's where the recent update comes in. See, Sony knew that this would be a problem, so they provided an expandability slot for more storage. And I'm gonna show that to you now, and then we're gonna talk about how you can expand your storage and what the best options for that are. The first thing you need to do is open up your PlayStation 5. Now, I know that could be scary for somebody who has just spent a lot of money on this console, but it actually was designed to open very easily. I'm gonna show you that to you. What you wanna do is flip it over like this so that the disc drive is facing up. You're gonna lift this corner up right here. You can see it bends up like that. And all we're gonna do is lift it up and then push that way. The first time you do this, it will be tight. I've done this a couple times, so it's not that tight. Once you get this cover off, you're looking for this right here. This will be held on with a screw. I've already taken mine out. It uses a Phillips screw. If you're not sure that's this star-shaped one, you can use a pretty small one, but most medium-tipped ones will work. You're gonna take that cover off, save it over here, and that's gonna expose the expansion slot. This is an M.2 expansion slot. Now there are special requirements of what kind of drive will fit in here. I've tested a number of different drives and I've done speed tests and I've done in-game comparisons. So I'm going to tell you the drive that I use. So stay tuned for that. But let's cover the minimum specs first. You must use an M.2 NVMe SSD. It must be a Gen 4 PCIe. It cannot be a Gen 3. A Gen 3 will not work. It must be a Gen 4. There are specific speed requirements and there are specific size requirements, but as long as you have a 22 
XX series of Gen 4 card, you'll be okay. Most drives will be a 2280, so you don't have to worry about it. It fits very easily. People get hung up on the speed and the specs and all that. Don't worry about it. Make sure it is a Gen 4. Make sure it is a 22 something, probably a 2280 for the size, and it must have a heat sink. If the drive that you bought does not have a heat sink, it's okay. You can use generic heat sinks as well. I will put a list of drives in the description that will all work in here. They have all been tested, and I will tell you if you need a heat sink or if you don't need a heat sink. Bottom line is, if it has a heat sink, you're golden. So that's the 2230, 2242, 2260, 2280, and 22110. Now most drives are gonna fit, probably they're gonna be a 2280. And the nice thing is Sony included the screw and the shim that you need. So all we're gonna do is take this out like this. Now the drive I have is 2280. So I'm gonna put the shim in there. Then I'm gonna take my drive. Now the drive has pins here which go on this side and then the screw is gonna hold it down here. So you're gonna put it in at an angle. So you see this slides in like that, at this angle. You see that angle that I have there? You're gonna slide it in at that angle, and then you're gonna push it down like that. That will lock it in place. You can't slide it straight in. Like if I was to take this like this and slide it straight in, it would not go and you would probably wreck the pins. Make sure you're sliding it in at an angle. As long as that shim's in place, then we just lock the drive down like this. You do not need to torque it down a lot, but you do wanna make sure that it's tight. So there you can see we've got the installed drive ready to go. You also wanna put the cover on and reattach the screw. That leads me to the discussion about this drive. What is this drive? This is a Corsair MP600 Core. It is a Gen 4 PCIe M.2 drive. You'll remember I said that that is the minimum spec you have to meet. You'll also remember I said that there are speed requirements for the drive. Now this drive does not meet the speed requirements that Sony recommends. However, through my testing, I found that this particular drive has no noticeable speed issues when playing any first party PlayStation 5 games, third party games, or PlayStation 4 games. There is no discernible difference between running a game off of this external drive and the PlayStation 5 internal storage. The reason for that is the internal storage on the PlayStation 5 is actually only rated at 5,500 megabytes per second. And you'll notice this one is rated at 4,700 megabytes per second. When I plugged this in, the PlayStation did a read test on this drive and they said that I'm actually closer to 5,700 megabytes per second or 5.7 gigabytes per second of read speed with this drive. So it easily meets the requirements for the PlayStation. The PlayStation does not care even if it is too slow, as long as it's a Gen 4. This is my budget pick for the drive that you should use if you're on a budget. If you've got lots of money, buy whatever drive you want with whatever spec you want, pay top dollar, whatever, that's fine. But you can get a two terabyte version of this drive for the same price as a one terabyte that has the higher specs. You decide, do you want space or do you want speed? I would go for the more space and not the more speed. The other thing you would notice is that I don't actually have the space to put this cover on. I am using my system just like this with the cover off. Now I have done heat tests on this. I have done comparisons with the cover off, with it on, and with it totally sealed up, and I'm comfortable running it like this. There are some risks associated with that. The biggest risk is dust buildup right here. As long as you keep your system clean, you won't have a problem. This has actually been used like this for about five months now without being cleaned out, and I have pets, and this is close to the floor. It's not a problem. Be aware there are certain risks, and I can already hear everybody freaking out, saying, holy crap, Anton, you're leading everyone astray. Don't worry about it, it'll be okay. The next step is to put your cover back on, and it goes on opposite of before. So you just set it down like this, and then push until it pops, like that. Now that the cover's on, we're able to go to the TV, power up the system. There's a few settings that you're gonna to wanna to change, and I'm gonna show those to you after we do the initial setup. The first thing you're gonna to need to do is turn your PlayStation on. It's going to detect that you have 
a new drive inserted in there and it's gonna tell you, you've installed a drive, do you wanna format it? You're gonna say yes, let's format it. And then it'll format the drive. It will do it quite quickly and then it does a low level read speed test. It gave me a speed of 5,615 megabytes per second, which is way above the spec that the drive's actually rated for. It's not gonna be a concern for your read speed at all. From there, you're gonna click OK, and then it's gonna say, congratulations, this drive has been formatted, and here's how you can go and adjust the settings for that drive. And it will just boot into your PlayStation 5 normal menu. Once we're booted into this screen here, you wanna to go to the settings. Now, a top secret tip, you can just press triangle, and that immediately takes you up there. It doesn't matter where you are on here. If you press triangle, you immediately are taken up there. And then we just go over one more to settings. What we're looking for is this storage option right here. We're gonna to go to storage. Now you can see our console storage is 667 gigabytes and the M.2 storage, the Corsair MP600 core with a size of one terabyte and I have 176.4 gigabytes free. But we want to go all the way down here to installation location. You'll notice that these are both defaulted to console storage. I personally put these to M.2 for both. And I do that until my M.2 storage is full. So currently I still have space. If this was on my PlayStation 5 storage, I would have used all the space already and run out because you can see I have 823 gigabytes of storage space that is used already. And the console storage only has 667 gigabytes. I have solved my storage issues if I run out of space on this drive here, I can always use the 667 gigabytes for the PlayStation. Something else that I recommend, if you have a game that you really, really like, and you're worried about the speed issues with the lower spec drive, you can always transfer that game. So let's say that I'm worried about Warzone. I can go like this and I can say, move this. You can say I've checked it off and then I can move it to the console storage and it'll just transfer that over there and then it'll run off of the console. You do always have this option for any games that you're experiencing, any sort of speed issues or glitches that you believe may be caused by your SSD. That's all there is to install an aftermarket SSD. Again, a lot of them will be in the description down below. You can pick and choose the one you like. I personally recommend the MP Core 60. It's one of the cheapest drives you can get that's a Gen 4 and meets those requirements for the PlayStation 5 so you can maximize your storage space without breaking the bank. There are other options out there that are in a similar price range, but this one came with a heatsink as well. Keep that in mind. Now you know everything you need to know about upgrading your PlayStation 5 internal storage and meeting all the specs and everything that I've learned over the last year playing with that PlayStation 5 and testing so that you don't have to. I'd love to hear about your experience in the comments, post that below. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video and we'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together. You'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. You can check out some of our other content right over here, where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.